I'm on a journey to find out the cheapest emulation PC and how to build one. In the last video, I used this retro gaming preloaded hard drive on an old Dell computer, old i5. We threw in a dedicated graphics card, and it definitely helped with the performance, especially when it comes to GameCube, Nintendo Wii, Wii U, and etc. I want to go ahead and run this same test again without the graphics card, without the upgraded RAM, and see if this makes a difference or not, so we can come to the conclusion here, which we can find out what systems you want to play and what are the minimum requirements and what you should be looking for. So that's our goal in this video, and we'll go ahead and test out some of the systems with the current setup, and then one without the graphics card, and then we'll determine on what is the best thing for your body. All right, so here are the specs on the computer here. Um, I'm not actually going to take the RAM out. I've, I've just been running the, the performance generator to see if the RAM ever even goes over the 8 gigabytes that this system particularly came for. It definitely goes above 4. So if you can go from 4 to 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're going to be good to go. But here we're playing uh, Wii U here. And uh, we can see that we have the GPU 100% maxed out and the CPU at like 80%. And it already is a little bit laggy with this GT710 graphics card in the computer now. So while the RAM upgrade is not going to help you out here, the GPU is necessary to play this. Moving on to GameCube, something a little lighter. We could see that again, we're using 90 to 100% of this GT710 graphics card. So you're not going to be able to play GameCube without that dedicated graphics card, even with the, well, we're, we'll find out. We're going to try it anyways with, with the, without the graphics card, but you'll notice it's not going to run. Now here's some Nintendo 64. It's running just fine. And you can see it's using less than 50% of the GPU. So it's probably where you're going to start getting some, you'll be able to play some games without a dedicated graphics card, but you will need a dedicated graphics card up to that point. Next, we're testing out Mortal Kombat for MAME. A lot of these games are going to play just fine, like WrestleMania and X-Men Arcade. You know, those are very don't not GPU intensive at all. Moving on to PlayStation, we're going to find that PlayStation will run good either way. But um, we can see here it's not lagging at all with the dedicated graphics card, and it's barely using any of the GPU. It's less than Nintendo 64. And I do want to point out while I'm getting wrecked by these pigs here that... Um, a lot of this has to do with optimization as well. As you start going from N64, PlayStation, Sega Saturn, GameCube, and PSP as well, you can customize it quite a bit. You can upscale and downscale the graphics significantly and All thus right. run it on a lower performance. We are at 10% on the CPU, 28% on the GPU. So chill, super chill. This is not it's gonna be an issue at all. But uh, let's just go ahead and run a second rally really quick. Alright, what are we at? 80% on the GPU and 40% on the CPU. So this will be interesting as well to see if we get away with it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and shut down the computer, take out the graphics card. This thing is hot. All right, well, how about Sega CD then, huh? All right. And we're only using 10% of the CPU right now. That's what I thought. So not a problem. All right, and where were we at? Wow. So Project 64 doing its work. Ooh, it's quite a bit of lag to get back into the, uh... I mean, that was handling it just fine.
Interesting. So, we had success with Nintendo 64, we had success with PS1. Nope. So here is an example. I had to go and lower the res to get it to run properly. And so that did help a little bit, but it also depends on the game you're playing as well. So let's look at this menu here. This is for handhelds, but let's go ahead and look at the different emulators here from line H all the way to Y. We have Game Boy, NES, Sega Genesis, so all the lower end. Then we come up to PlayStation, Nintendo DS, Nintendo 64, Sega Dreamcast, PSP, Sega Saturn, Nintendo GameCube, Nintendo Wii, 3DS, PS2, Wii U, Nintendo Switch, and then PlayStation 3. And we could see based on this video, we were basically running a RG35XX based on this video. When you take out the graphics card, what one of these little smaller computers will do with onboard graphics, um, you're going to get similar to this. Although we were actually able to get, no, yeah, this is about right. <laughs> and you can um, play around with the emulators. That's something I want to make clear is that I you could go into the emulators, you could lower the resolution, you get it to 1x so that you could just barely play the games at a really low resolution. But if you want to play them like anywhere nor normal or looking well, you're definitely going to want a dedicated graphics card. You can see once we put the graphics card in, we were similar to the One Pro here, where all of these systems ran just fine. GameCube, Sega Saturn, PSP, we were running at 2x PSP, which is a GT10 graphics card. Now, the minute you add in a 1030 graphics card or a 970, now all of a sudden we're playing all the way up to getting close to Nintendo Switch. So it really beefs up the Sega Saturn, the GameCube, the Wii, the 3DS, and then the PS2, Wii U, and then the Nintendo Switch and the PS3. That's where you're going to really need a more modern computer to play those titles. So this gives you an idea of how much you need to spend and how much performance you need to what systems you want to be playing. All right, so let's break this down. So first of all, the computer. You can see there's just so many of these Optiplexes and these Precision Dells, just these computers that used to be in libraries and at schools that are basically e-waste now, and you can get them for super, super cheap. So you want to start with a base model like that. You want to check the power supply, and you want to make sure that it has room for a graphics card as well. You notice a lot of these have that extra slot down here for the graphics card, and then this one even has an SSD already in it. But a lot of them have spinning hard drive. So let's start there. The SSD is not going to make you game much faster. It's just going to allow you to boot up the computer much faster and access files much faster. So, And it's so cheap. I mean, $20 to $40 for depending on what size you need. I'm running these retro gaming hard drives off of a USB, so it really doesn't matter with the SSD. But it's just it's such a cheap, easy upgrade. But it's not going to actually give you any performance benefits on your games unless they're stored on this actual SSD. Now the RAM. If you have four gigs to eight gigs, you're definitely going to see a huge improvement. As we saw in the gaming and emulation gaming, you will get up to five, six gigabytes. But going from eight to 16, you're going to have massive diminishing returns. So you might want to use that extra money towards a better graphics card or a better CPU. Speaking of the CPU, I just went up a few generations here, like a 2013 chip versus a 2017 chip. So going from, I'm running a 2500 in this video to like a 7600K, going from a 2013 chip to a 2017 chip. And you notice that the gaming performance is a 10% increase, which isn't too bad. And it's a 20% increase overall in effective speed. It's a nice upgrade, but as you see, as you get further and further down the list though, like going from a 2,500 to a 4,600, only a 10%. And then, you know, gener so depends on how many generations you can jump, but um, you know, a lot of that's gonna be with what computer you find. So like this one is a 7,500. So that would be kind of nice to have a 7,500 computer compared to this 2,500. Oh, there you go. See 75, only a 6% from this computer in this listing to the one I'm using in the video here. So 20, even though it's a four year newer chip. Now there's gonna have other benefits as well, besides just the, the it's gonna have a better built-in graphics card and it's gonna have better clock speeds and lower power consumption. Now the graphics card. I've The reason I'm making these videos is I already had the GT710 laying away, running around. I never spent any money on it whatsoever. If you can afford, if you're starting out go and get the GT 1030 
it's going to perform much better. As you see, almost a 300% performance gain. It's going to run PlayStation 2, Nintendo Wii U, with, and even PlayStation 3. My next video, I'll be doing the 745 because I found these for, you could find these cards for about 20 or $30. So in the next video, I've purchased one of these. We're going to go ahead and compare this. The 745, you can find them on eBay. 30, 40 bucks was shipping, 30 bucks was shipping, $30 free shipping. So we're going to compare these. So is it as good as a 1030? Absolutely not. You know, 745 compared to the 1030, 1030 is going to be way uh, pretty significantly better. Uh, and then if you get the 1050, boom, even much, much better. But um, we're going to see maybe this is the best budget out there we're going to see if we get the 745 to run playstation 2 and some other things so stay tuned for that video we're going to compare that next so there you go as far as i want to do these videos as far as getting yourself gaming as cheaply as possible and recycling parts that have been around for a long time already and doing it at on a budget uh, making these little small emulator pcs and uh, it could be a, a nice little media center retro gaming machine.